Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. You guys better be glad that I like you. I like you a lot. This is a hot day outside. It's one of these days I shouldn't be doing much of anything. 112 degrees, my lord. I moved to California to avoid temperatures like this. Because of that heat, this air conditioner is probably going to be on the entire time we are uh, playing these reindeer games. What are we doing today? We are going to add some value to this car with just software, just bits, just ones and zeros. BMW, for whatever reason, decided, well, I know the reason why, but we won't get into it. Legal. Uh, Tree-hugging hippies, that kind of stuff. California had some regulations and BMW complied with those regulations. And one of those things is reducing the size of the petrol tank or the gas tank in this thing. The rest of the world gets 2.4 gallons, California 1.9. So there's half a gallon that's left on the floor somewhere. And people wondered, oh, maybe it's a different tank, maybe there's some type of ballast being used inside the tank, like a brick, who knows. Like I was saying, they're the exact same part number for the European ones and the American one. And so somebody determined that it was just a bit of software that was setting so as the you know, I don't know why I'm pointing at this one we're actually talking about this guy I'm just trying to avoid the air conditioner here now this is where you fuel up with uh, old dinosaurs when you fill this thing up to 2.4 gallons which this thing will take now a lot of you guys that are that have been using the i3 for a while you say no that, that's that's impossible uh, every time I fill up it, it clicks and, and cuts off right at 1.9 that it's not Sure. Sorry about the uh, little in interruption there. I had to get lunch and also it's the next day because the uh, air conditioner unit itself decided to give up the ghost. Uh, it got so hot. It actually got up to like 116 so I can't imagine that these caps were gonna be designed to live through 116 day. <laughs> Maybe hotter inside the little metal can that it's in but uh, and we also had some power outages but luckily the kitchen is still running off of my uh, poor man's power wall. Uh, which is just a bunch of Chevy Volt batteries down here. It used to be uh, lead acid, now Chevy Volt, um, and some Outback off-grid solutions. Even without air conditioning uh, and electricity in the rest of the house, folks can still have popsicles and our food won't go bad. You know, back to the i3. Uh, less rambling. So where do we leave off? I was talking about the gas tank. A lot of the BMW owners will fill up their tank and it'll hit 1.9, and so they're, they, they're comfortable with imagining that it's only 1.9 gallons. Uh, in reality, it's 2.4 and you're just allowed to consume down to 1.9 and then when you fill up, it replaces that 1.9. But there's still a half gallon on the bottom of your tank that's sitting there. So somewhere in the world, there's some nice old lady that that, that wasn't paying attention to all the, the warnings that she's running out of range in her brand new, you know, serial electric hybrid car and ran out of gas but she's sitting on the side of the road with half a gallon of gasoline and half a gallon of gasoline in this particular car will take you a long way definitely long enough to get to another petrol station and, and, and top this thing off so that's a shame and luckily we can fix it with some bits and some ones and zeros so let's take a stab at that and, and also I didn't do a video of this when I originally did it because I thought well I think this is kind of you know, uh, people have done it before. Uh, I've, I'm having to reprogram this thing after taking it to the dealership, and they zeroized all my changes and installed new software um, to try and fix a bug that this th that this car was having. So all the all that's lost, and I've got to redo it. So th that I thought, well, why not make a video now? Uh, especially because I, I think that I might have a slightly different audience, and so those folks might not know that this type of thing's uh, possible. I, I think that I knew that hacking uh, on, on CAN messages and, and things like that or like modifying an ECU was, was doable uh, with a lot of these new modern cars. But I didn't realize that for BMWs especially, they have a thing called coding. And the manufacturers of these thing of, of all their other all BMWs and then also some other brands that are tied in like a BMW and Rolls-Royce um, you know it's like a, a larger family of uh, automakers there they probably don't want to recertify the software or um, have to make changes at the last minute if they decide to have four bongs instead of three bongs when you get in or uh, you know how, how how what speeds the uh, seat belt reminder as you can tell, I've, I've since fixed the air conditioner. <laughs> it's back on. So, uh, yeah, like maybe, maybe in some region of the world, you're supposed to have the mirrors 
pop back out if you've had them stowed away above 14 miles an hour or some places might not have that regulation so to get around a lot of those different regulations that some of these automakers have uh, they they've set up almost like a p-list or like a xml file with a, just a ton of different settings if, if there's something that was tunable in this like the brightness of the leds in the headlights or uh what happens when you press uh, button number four or button number three on your key fob all those things yeah all, all those things are are programmable it's they might want additional functionality like one of the things i'm going to do when i get back in there which i had before is um there's you can set the air conditioner on this car to come on uh, it's like auto starting but you're not starting anything with electric car but you can you can start to cool down the uh, interior of the car or heat it up if you're in Canada or something like that or, or you're in a, in a cold climate you can do that remotely from your cell phone but there isn't a way to do it from your key fob at least not until after mod you know, making some changes to the uh, the software in here so now I have it or I will when we're done here with with the uh, the shitty Windows laptop I will uh, have the ability to just tap this once or press and hold the panic button. I, I haven't had a, you know, I don't have a lot of need for this panic button. Uh, I don't intend on getting assaulted in a parking lot, but um, the ability to like walk away and say, you know, to know I'm in a hot parking lot and that when I get back out from shopping or whatever, then I'm gonna want this car to be cooled off. The app sometimes, it's got, you know, it's gotta send it up to a server and then server's gotta send it down from space and you know, like things are happening. And, but this one, you can just press it and you'll hear it, boom, it comes on and then your AC is going. So big plus so we're actually adding features we're, we're, or we're adding value to a car uh, that came stock without some of these this this value it's, it's amazing uh, the other thing that's amazing and the reason I, I really felt like making this video is I don't think that the public is aware of how affordable this car is now uh, this particular one this exact VIN number which later you might have to like try and I'm about to blur out my VIN numbers. I'm pretty sure people can't get things from plates, but VIN numbers, eh. Um, this exact VIN number, if you look at the sticker in the window, it was like $58,000 when new, just two years ago, okay? I bought this car for $17,000 two years later. That's a huge depreciation. And that depreciation comes not because the car is shit. It's, well, I mean, there's a perception in the public that the car is shit. It's, but it's, it's more fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The, the car is actually, it's, it's an amazing car. It's got sat nav and satellite radio, and Bluetooth, all the gizmos and gadgets we're about to talk about. Um, other than it being a battery car and, and, you know, turning your frogs gay, it's a pretty awesome little car. And even if you, especially if you've got this range extended model, you can, put gas in it and just run it on gas all the time. You'd be stopping more often because it only it'll take you about 100 miles on that gas you'd be take, making more frequent stops uh, but you don't have to charge this thing up ever if you didn't want to and then the the suicide doors are a little bit annoying uh, you, you if you have friends that you pet or you know kids you have to load up often in the back you have to open this door normally and then the other one's suicide and then it has to go back in that same order the suicide goes back and then this door and so it's like a one two thing and like if you're parked next to somebody else like this the i'll show you Let's say, and actually I've got a decent space here, but let's say that you're parked and you want to get a kid out from the back. You have to open this door up. All right, mind the paint job, mind the paint job. Uh, and then kid has to get out. But now if you look, they're, bas they're basically trapped in this space here. They can't get out and then walk um, to the back side of the vehicle. This door has to be closed so that they can get out, right? And you could close this one, but then it won't latch. There's nothing the B pillar is built into the door. So the door has to, this door has to be closed. So what you end up doing is to stand in this little triangle space here. So she'll get out and then she's been trained to stand here and then close that one, leaving a path to get out and then this one. So it's like a little bit of a one, two stutter step to get out of this car. That's really one of the only annoying things about this car. Other than that, I mean, it's pretty schnazzy. And so if you're going to college or, you know, you've just gotten out of college, you're looking for, a, you know, a nice newish car. Uh, if you've got a, your new job and you're, you got money burning a hole in your pocket, this is one of them, man. Like this is uh, this is a decent little BMW. If you live close to your work or your work has free charging or something like that, uh, which a lot of new businesses are doing, the pure electric version of this, so you'd miss out on being able to fill it up with uh, with gas, the pure electric version, I've seen them going for fourteen and fifteen thousand dollars. Clean title, two years old. It's it's phenomenal. I mean, I mean, it's it's not phenomenal for the for the ass hat that paid sixty grand for this car, but sorry, that's that's depreciation for you, right? Like that's that's why I, I tend not to buy brand new cars because you just take such an ass kicking in the uh, in the depreciation. So. 
Wow, that's a lot of rambling for, for a video that's supposed to be about upgrading some software. Let's get into it. Not have this thing charging while we're programming it. Turn the air conditioner off. Now, I don't have air conditioning in the garage, and for a moment I had the thought of rolling down the windows like I've done here. I did this so that in case something goes wrong or like a module gets reset and it locks all the doors or something, I can get back in if I need to, reach in and get my keys. Um, but I thought, I'll roll the windows down and turn on the air conditioner and voila, I'll have air conditioning in the garage. Genius. Right? Go ahead and leave a, leave a comment down below if you know why that wouldn't work. Other than trying to impress people or embarrass, you know, like a Porsche as you pull off the line and, and dust them up to about 30 miles an hour, unless you're doing that all the time, you don't, one doesn't necess necessarily need it in comfort all the time. So one of the tunables on this is to have it start up in Eco Pro mode, and that'll give you a bit more range. That's what we're going to do. So the reason I'm recording the screen now is because I want to capture, I want to capture this gas range. Um, for, the, for running on the little generator in the back. So uh, it thinks we'd have 50 miles with the tank we have now. So let's see if that, if that changes after we um, convince the car that it has an extra half a gallon in there. Looks like it's time to blow the dust off some shitty old Windows laptop. I tried doing this in a uh, virtual machine uh, with not a lot of luck in the communication. So going with the crappy netbook. There we go. Already a 20, uh, 20 mile increase on the expected range for the gas engine, just right there. Now I've got to get this <laughs> whittled down to 75% so I can turn on the uh, range extender manually before this thing throws a code. There's modules that are waiting for that thing to, to kick on and if you don't run it soon, it'll throw up a, a check engine light. So let's try and get that cleared out. Okay. So now that we made some changes, the uh, best thing to do is to get back in uh, you can see some of them took effect like the it, it started up in eco pro as an example um, but I've, I've heard reports of some of the different settings not taking until you completely power cycle or allow the, the the car to sleep which which I do by getting out um, locking the car and then letting it sit there for about 10 minutes so that's what I'm going to do next I hope you guys have gotten a kick out of watching me add some value to this car and make some tweaks and settings that make it a little bit more uh, personal for me in the way I drive the car. If you made it this far, click the thumbs up. If you think you'd like to watch stuff like this in the future, make sure you subscribe. To recap what we've done today, we made a number of mods, probably too many to, to actually mention, but some of the, some of the big takeaways are uh, enabling the AM radio. The hold mode's a big deal. If you are going somewhere and you know that your electric range won't take you there, but you when you get there, you want to make sure that you've got electric range so you're not making a buzzing noise. Uh, you got the little motorcycle motor going when you pull up into valet. The hold mode is ideal. Uh, it lets you pick and choose when you, when you use your EV range. Uh, as you can see, we've enabled the, some video playback on the screen where at the default it was, it would just play the audio for this. Now it's doing the full video. And of course, you wouldn't watch this while you're driving around because you're not a moron. Uh, but if you've got kids and you're waiting in the parking lot at, at a, you know, the doctor's office or grocery store or something like that, and uh, the wife's just running to get something, great way to distract kids. Definitely a nice option to have. I went and disabled all the uh, startup legal notices about being distracted by said videos. I got rid of those. I got rid of the seatbelt chime. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is about the BMW. I think it has something to do with, like, I have this uh, impression that things need to boot up. And so immediately when I get in, I boot up, and then I reach over my shoulder, and I buckle up i don't know it's just the it's just the habit i've gotten into now if i did it the other way around if i buckled and then pressed the start button i wouldn't get this annoying bong 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 uh that's warning me about my seatbelt being uh not connected i'm like i, I know you've, you've given me zero seconds to put my seatbelt on geez it, it doesn't even do it when you if it did it when i put it into drive and said hey 
dummy. Um, you've you've not put on your seatbelt. Totally fine. I probably wouldn't be sitting in here hacking that thing and disabling it. But it's super annoying. Uh, I tried. You heard earlier the bong bong is actually from the Rolls Royce. A little bit more subtle. I like that one. Um, but today I just disabled it completely. I also disabled the the warning if the passenger doesn't buckle up. I'm often carrying heavy bags or uh, you know some equipment for work or something like that and it trips this sensor and sits there and you know bitches at you that your passenger who isn't actually a passenger is not wearing their seatbelt. Uh, I also enabled the handles on the side over here to uh, turn on when you're in reverse. It's nice at night so that when you are looking through your side mirrors here uh, the ground behind you is illuminated uh, by way of the uh, the welcome light on the handle. Nice. I'm not sure why that's not on there as a default. That's obviously something they thought about. Uh, I also enabled the rear view camera at all speeds. I oh, mean, the car needs to be on. Here we go. Uh, this ended up being really nice on a trip that I took, and I had the back back here completely filled up with junk all the way up to the tippy top, and so I had no rear view. Like, if I looked here, I just saw junk in the back. Uh, but with this, it acted as like a little rear view mirror. Uh, and it's actually it is mirrored if, if you go out there it acts like this it doesn't act like a video feed they flipped it which is nice um, and so I was able to see if people were coming up on me quickly you know just normal situational awareness so that was really nice uh, other things that I didn't do but you could are switching the voice to British for the sat nav uh, one of the other things that I did was um, if you go back to media here you're playing your stuff uh, in this particular car when you when you turn everything off and you go to leave if your music's playing it'll continue to play right you got your podcast going and that kind of jazz and even if you put on the parking brake and i get out of the car it'll stay on the meaning the podcast you'll hear the podcast playing as you're walking away and then you'll hear it lose bluetooth connectivity and it'll stop playing but the radio's still on still trying to do its thing uh no, it's annoying because if you're, you're listening to like a book on tape you'll miss bits and pieces it's kind of annoying uh so i turn i enabled the ability to do this there you go. So when you open the door, it shuts off the radio. It shuts off the uh, the iDrive system. Again, not sure why that wasn't on there by default. Uh, other things that I didn't enable. Uh, there's a thing called the developer menu. I'm not really sure. I think that's actually buried away uh, somewhere by using this button. You can get into a developer menu. Uh, so that's all. You know, I haven't used that yet. You can also another thing that I didn't do because I, I kind of like where it is now. It doesn't bother me. But uh, let, let's. So that for whatever reason you want to enable the default of where the ice motor kicks in for the range extender that little carrot there you can move that carrot further down this way uh, I'm not sure where the limit is but you can say oh well you know start start burning gas when I get to 20% right now it's set at 6% as a default uh, you can also bump that up to 20% or higher who knows I haven't tried uh, I was thinking about bringing it down some because it just so happens that the natural range of this car is like 70 miles for me uh, with a full charge. And so with the way I drive it, like 75, 80 miles an hour the whole time, any chance I get, I get up to speed. I don't, I don't baby this thing. I'm not trying to like, you know, save the planet. Yeah, I, I could care less. Fuck, I'd, I'd burn 20 trees to get to work every day if I, if I had to. So the, the only reason I do that is like, I don't like that this comes on or when I roll in my neighborhood and it's like, brrr, it, it, you, it sounds like a, like a small motorcycle is following me. Um, I, I just like to be as, as quiet as I can when I come into the neighborhood. And so I'm, I've noticed anecdotally that it's, it's like 30, 35 miles out to work and back. I can make it to work and back almost completely on EV uh, range, except right as I kind of pull into the neighborhood, it'll it'll trip on, but I've still got like 6% left. So if I moved that little carrot down to like 1%, uh, of course I wouldn't be giving myself much of a buffer for this to kick in. Uh, I don't think that this thing can actually run the car at, at full tilt at like 80, 90 miles an hour on just the generator. So it relies on some amount of battery. Um, so I, you, you gotta dance around, you gotta play with these settings and see what works for you. But if I, if I brought it down to like 1%, I'm confident I'd always be getting home and never touching this. So I'd probably go you know months and months without actually putting fuel in this thing. All right, so I've only scratched the surface on this, I know. And there are a ton of other settings and there's probably some things that I might've left out. Uh, I'm gonna put some links down in the description for where you can get both uh, the uh, the proprietary files uh, to the application that I'm using over there on the laptop. It, 
as best I can tell, is actually a proprietary BMW program. And so you can't just download that from BMW. You need to go to like some shady Russian website and get it there. Um, and then also I'll, uh, I'll link a PDF to all of the very common settings that you that I've described here. Uh, it's almost like a how-to. Actually, there is a, there's a how-to and then there's like a common settings uh, for i3s B, uh, PDF. I'll put those out there. Uh, those have been made by folks in the community. So big thanks to those folks for putting this together. And of course, I've only scratched the surface here. So uh, there's some things that I did previously uh, with the last time I did this and I didn't document it. And I didn't do that this time because uh, it, it takes a little bit longer and I've got to, you know, I've got to actually like do those things before these settings because doing those things uh, makes it erase all these settings again it, it like nukes the ECU parameters so uh, I'd already started tweaking this and I decided not to go back and do those things but uh, I'll put in some uh, some screenshots here of some of the other cool features like uh, you can actually have this thing set up as an M vehicle or like um, their the BMW's Motorsports M category and you can have this do lap times and keep track of like your G loads and uh, it'll actually talk to a, gro a GoPro that you've got bolted onto the front of the car or up here um, near your, your dash. You can have it like wirelessly communicating so that when you're done with your, you're doing hot laps in your, your BMW i3, uh, you can come in and actually control it with the iDrive system here and uh, tell it to start and stop for, for different laps. It'll keep track of that stuff and sync up the, the telemetry uh, both in like G loads and um, motor speed, you know, like a, not motor speed, but like a, the miles per hour and that type of stuff. It'll sync all that to the video so that you can review it later. It's actually pretty snazzy. And there's a bunch of other things of like setting up the, what, what equates to like a mobile office on here with having it read your emails, like, like uh, text to speech and also speech to text back, back out for uh, drafting emails and for answering text messages. And I didn't enable that because it, it when I did before it didn't work perfect uh, and I've noticed that when I've got Siri I can just uh, press and hold this button for a few seconds and then Siri comes on how hot is it today it's currently partly cloudy and 82 degrees expect cloudy skies starting tonight temperatures are heading down from 82 this afternoon to 71 tonight like so and so once you have Siri up and running uh, she, you know she can read me text messages and you know read back my calendar and my, you know email you know, she can do a lot of stuff so uh, I haven't really bothered to, to do the specific BMW stuff so I've had a blast showing you guys these things if you liked it again thumbs up subscribe and let me know in the comments thanks I'm hanging in there ain't no doubt and I'm hanging tough over and out over and out over